run. Welcome back to another Gaming Memories video. And here we have a quite rare racing game on the PlayStation called Midnight Run that was released by Konami. Essentially, it's actually more or less a port of an arcade game that was released by Konami itself. And it's actually quite a rare game to find even in this day and age as well. If you happen to find physical copies for running them the likes of eBay and stuff, you will actually pay quite a bit in order to get it because it is actually quite hard to find. But funny enough now, I never actually really played or experienced this back in the day on the PlayStation 7. I had played a version of it in the arcade, I think when I was on holidays one year, and I only got a couple of goals of it. Because I remember we were able to play with the likes of steering wheel and all that, which was pretty cool. And it was different as well because of the fact that you were driving on the likes of proper streets like in Japan and that, trying to dodge traffic, which was quite tough compared to other racing games that I played where we were usually just flying around tracks the whole time. So it was very different. But even at that, I remember when I used to go shopping, like if I go like looking for games, we used to go up to the Dublin city centre because it was me living in Ireland, there was never really many game shops in where I even live in, so you used to always have to travel a few miles out from town and you'd have to always usually to go to the city of Dublin because that's where they primarily have all like so the game shops and that where you'd be able to find whatever games you were looking for. And I remember those were back in the days of the likes of game and electronics boutique and so forth. And you would be able to find a number of these games usually on the shelves and you'd usually be able to find them at discounts and that. I do remember particularly seeing this one in both of those stores, usually in either on the discount shelves or sometimes in the bargain bins for about 20 or 15 pound at the time. Now I had actually looked at it a few times, it actually gone down and I was nearly tempted to buy it because I'm, I, I love my racing games and I do love the, the racing games on the PlayStation 1 because that's the one cool thing that I loved as well about the PlayStation was the fact is that it was, there was no shortage of racing games and if anything some of the, a lot of the racing games on the platform really paved the way for the way car games are played or even created now in today in video games so this platform really had a lot to do with all that but I do remember seeing this game in a lot of the like the discount sections and I was going to buy it but I think initially when I was every time I went down I was always intending on buying another game it was always like usually Resident Evil or was whatever other game because I would only ever go to Dublin maybe a handful of times maybe once or twice in a year whenever I could afford it because again you know, you're just kind of saving up your pocket money to buy games but I do remember always wanting to buy a couple of racing games as well because I genuinely loved the racing games on the Playstation and again like I said there were so many and there was just there was any amount of them to choose from and I remember actually looking at the case of this game and I actually really liked the look of it and I thought this actually looks really cool and it's got like authentic cars and stuff but uh, for some reason I didn't buy it. I don't know why. I think it just I think it was looking to buy another game at that time. So I ended up leaving it. But as time went on, then it became less easy to find. You wouldn't find it in like say discount sections as much. And to be honest, it got to a point then later on where it only really showed up really later years when likes of people were selling it say on likes of online likes of ebay and stuff but i didn't realize at that time primarily had you actually bought the game it would have actually would have actually made money on it because it's one of those games because it's rare it actually is appreciated in value because there's quite a few games even i remember like i've even bought and sold some games on ebay over the years and even some games I used to have and eventually I remember I had to sell them on as years went on because I needed money for other things. But I found that some of the games that I actually sold had actually sold for way more money than I had actually originally bought it for because I kept it in really good condition. Because that was the thing, I always kept my games in really, really very, very good condition. I always looked after them. So that always kind of had that appeal to it too. But I do remember prices on this here on eBay going up in like £50 or if not more, even something in most cases, depending on how good the condition the copy was. And people were paying big bucks for it back then, and this was only like a couple of years ago. 
and even at that, if you can find it on it now, it, you will find it, but it's how it's difficult. But you will pay quite a bit of money for a good physical copy of this game. Now. And it's funny, like when you look back, like say for like say fifteen pound in a bargain bin, you'd be thinking to yourself, "Well, it's not really worth much." But you don't really see the long term value of it, I suppose, back then. Whereas now, it's worth a lot more. So if you do happen to have a copy of it, it probably is worth a lot more. But anyway, like. As time went on, eventually I did get to play it, and I have to say now I totally enjoyed it. It is a little bit on the fiddly side in terms of its handling, but again, it's just it's, it's just a pure arcade game, really. You just fling the car around the corners. It uses authentic cars. The handling is actually good if you, when you when you get used to it. It's very very fast, and the one thing I loved about it was the fact that you were flying around or driving around the streets of. The highways of Tokyo and you were dodging traffic which even back in say most days in the PlayStation like say in terms of the most of the racing games that I played the way you never really had too many games like that so you didn't they were like say the Need for Speed games would have actually had some of that but even at that they, they didn't they didn't really have that kind of element it until like the before a few games into the series so to be able to have that element and it added a lot more to it, but it actually made the games a lot more difficult. Because I kid you not, I crashed and did everything. So, but again, I was adamant I wanted to play it because I just love cars. And to be honest, actually playing a lot of these type of games really kind of showcases my love for cars in general, even outside of playing video games. So, it, and a lot of it did stem from playing games like this back in the day as well. So. As I'd always gotten to love cars, but playing games like this really kind of escalated that. So this here was actually a really enjoyable game. I have to admit, like from what I did play it, and like I said, you know, I hadn't, I didn't play it during the heyday really at the PlayStation. I didn't play it till later on in years, and it's fun to pick up and play. It kind of does remind me a little bit like likes of Ridge Racer and games similar to it, where. It's obviously an arcade kind of feel, but it don't, you're limited in terms of the tracks. Be a little bit kind of like a little bit like so, even like Sega Rally or Daytona USA that was on at Sega Saturn even as well. If we played them in the arcades, where you only had the likes of three tracks, and depending on what difficulty you played, it would open up a completely different track, so you did completely different layers, you get more twists and bends and the actual difficulty of the opponents would get harder in each race as well the more to play it because as you can see here it's very very hard to even win a race in this here as well it really there's not a lot of room for error in it at all you really just have to have your wits about you and just hope that you get a bit of luck when you're actually driving too that you don't crash into too much stuff and just keep good racing lines because as soon as you mess up at all, you can never really get too far away from your opponent, even when you are in the lead. So if you do crash or if you hit a wall or something like that, chances are someone's going to pass out. And then you mean then you have to gain that time and try and pass them out again without making another mistake. So it adds the tension. So that's, games like this here did add that level of challenge as well. But as you can see here, like you can choose between normal type of cars or tuned cars. So obviously when you're tuned, they're more power, they had body kits and so forth. Plus the selection of cars, even though like at that point like there was four main cars and they were all real high end cars back in the nineties. Which I remember growing up always wanting like those type of cars, like the Toyota Supra, the Nissan Skyline, Mazda RX seven and the Honda NSX, all fantastic cars for a day, even like the classics in like today's standards. So it's always pretty cool to play these type of old games where you get to play as those type of cars and get to drive them as well and just to see what they're like because they were icons back in the day when you grew up watching them you always wanted to kind of have a go with them so to get to drive them was, was a privilege pretty much like so to have it in a game like this was awesome. And as you can see here, like because it's a harder difficulty in the game, the car, the car definitely are a lot faster, so you definitely have to be a lot more aware of your surroundings and be you have to, you have to be aware of your reactions as well because your the quicker your reactions the better you can actually get around corners and so forth. So it, it had a unique dynamic that way, so again they give you more challenge. But again a lot of these racing games had that uniqueness to it as well so it was definitely worthwhile so I actually did really enjoy this game it was actually really really good
even if it was difficult. And even by today's standards, like to get a physical copy, like I mentioned, it is very rare. So if you do happen to get your hands on a decent copy, it'd be worthwhile actually use it as a future investment because you will be able to make your money back, and if not, some more later on at some point. Because a lot of these games now are highly collectible and highly desirable, so they're definitely worthwhile investing in if you're into collecting games. It's definitely something to consider, for sure. But again, like I said, the PlayStation had so many unique racing games that just that you really were spoiled for choice. That was the one thing that I absolutely loved about the system. And even when I think of like racing games, even by today's standards, and even with the likes of PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3, and the games obviously did get more refined as time went on. But there definitely is unique kind of feel to the likes of these old school racing games. And I remember even back in the day by being blown away by a lot of these games, as I've mentioned in previous videos. The style, the quality of the graphics, and even the fact is how real at that time it felt. And even to this day, a lot of them still kind of do hold the test of time in some respects, even for old style graphics. But I just love that old era of that graphical style, the 32 bit style graphics, like the blocky style graphics. There's just something really about it, it's just, it adds a lot of character and a lot of charm to these type of games. And they're just as playable today as they've ever been. And if you can, if you really want to sit down and really enjoy yourself, they're definitely worthwhile having a go, even if you only just want to play it for casual play every so often when you have a bit of free time. So it's definitely highly recommended that you check it out. So this is one to definitely get a go if you ever get a chance. If you can find it, definitely give it a go and enjoy it for sure. So that's Midnight Run for you on the PlayStation and you can see now what it's like and how unique of a game it actually is. So if you have liked this video make sure to hit the subscribe button, also put a like on the video and also drop a comment down below and I will comment it back to each of you to let you know that I've seen that you have subscribed to the videos. Again it just helps with engagement with the videos and in the community in general as it does help to get people to watch more of these type of videos especially if you enjoy the PlayStation 1 and you like to hear stories and just know of all the memories of all the games that have come and gone in the past and it's definitely a good way to relive those old memories so it's definitely worthwhile looking into So again, make sure to keep playing those games and enjoy them. And until next time, make sure to keep those gaming memories alive.